the other week, I was talking to somebody, and we were talking about salvation. This is somebody who grew up in Orthodox Church and was had gone away from the church, but now to other, it looks like other faiths, other Christian faiths, and then came back, is trying to come back. And this person was talking about salvation, and he was saying, I'm assured of my salvation. I know that if I die, I will go to heaven. Because in the Bible, St. Paul, it says in the Bible, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So he says, I, I confess in the Lord Jesus, and I believe, so I know I'll be saved. And, you know, this is something that we, I even stumbled upon in my youth, hearing this, you know, are you saved? And, um, what, how do we answer this as Orthodox? How do we understand this? Because it's a fairly new cr- question in Christian life here. Um, and I used to think that, okay, so if I, and I'm trying to logically understand this, okay, well, if I accept Jesus in my heart, then whatever I do, God forgives me. And so why does it matter? Because God will forgive me. So what I do, you know, whatever happens in my life, God will forgive me, so I'm saved. So it kind of was tough for me. Because I would say that I want to follow Christ, but then I wouldn't do that. And I'd be like, how, how do I reconcile this? How do I understand this? It doesn't seem authentic. It doesn't seem that easy. And then I started learning about our church's teaching of salvation, of orth- the Orthodox understanding of what salvation is. And in the Orthodox Church, it's all about God's love for us. And it started with God creating us, that He created human beings because He wanted to love us. But we didn't love Him back. We disobeyed. And because we decided to be away from God, we go through death. But He still loves us. And He watches over us. He even became one among us, the second person of the Trinity. The Son became one among us. He endured suffering. He conquered death. And He's resurrected. And, li- and He is now lifting humanity up to the right hand of the Father. He's making us worthy of this, to be higher than the angels. And our participation in this salvation, each one of us participate from our baptism, and it's an ongoing thing till our last breath. And it continues into eternity, all the way to where God says, well done, good and faithful servant, or depart from me, I don't know you. It's an ongoing thing. It's not one moment in time. For us as Orthodox, this is an ongoing process. It's not as simple as just saying something one day, but rather to believe really means to offer yourself. You know, I told you to turn to page 447. I want you to sing stanza three with me. Then then appeared a galeta, sahada. So usually with these stanzas, I try to dissect what it means, and especially we sing it more in Malayalam. So I was trying to, okay. Dandana Pidagala is like sufferings. Sahada martyrs. And then I asked three people, and somebody after church, please explain it to me better, who knows the Malayalam, but they didn't know. I asked, what does Maudhyan Mar mean? Well, who is that? What does that mean? And they didn't know. I asked, they've been singing it their whole life, and they didn't know. But I don't know if anybody knows and can explain to me after the church. I would love to hear the explanation of that word. But in English, it's martyrs and confessors. So confessors, what is a confessor? What do we understand that to be? Because remember the verse Rome, that Paul is writing is if you believe in your heart, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that's what he says. And we think that means, oh, I, I just say that. 
But a confessor in the church, you have to remember in the early church especially, but even today, that there are people that, that are persecuting the church. And in the early church, it was complete persecution. And so what the, the emperor would declare is anybody who confesses the Lord Jesus Christ will undergo, undergo extreme pain and torture to try and get them to renounce Jesus. To, got, to try and get them to reject. Because he wanted everybody under his rule of pagan worship. And in anybody who confesses, and people, many of the confessors in the church are people who would go before and undergo, would never deny Christ, would confess the Lord Jesus Christ. And it would mean suffering and pain, suffering of their loved ones. They would kill their children in front of them. All this kind of stuff was happening. And there's so many examples in the church of this. And they would still remain faithful and confess the Lord and then eventually die a brutal death. And that's what we're talking about when we say the confessors. And when Paul is writing to Romans, the people, Rome is known for their persecution. They're known for their unique ways of torture. That's why even for our Lord Jesus Christ, they sent them to the Roman soldiers to do their execution because they were experts of it. They, they knew the ways to make the torture very hard. And so he is writing to the people in Rome and he is saying, confess with your Lord Jesus Christ to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe with your heart. It means expect that you're going to suffer and most likely die. But believe that God has risen from the dead. It's not the same as us when we think, oh, I just believe it and I go about my business and my day freely. No, that's not what St. Paul is saying there. He knows to the people in Rome what that means to confess. It means it's not just a verbal thing. It means suffering, pain, and death. That's all it means. And I say that because I think we need to understand the ongoing struggle of repentance that we deal with. Everything matters and it's crucial to our salvation. Today's gospel was about our Lord talking about the Pharisees. The Pharisees mentally knew everything. They knew the doctrine, they knew the law, they knew all of that stuff. But they were not living it in their life. And so Jesus is putting them as an example and saying, look, do not do what they do. Do not follow them. He was the most critical of the Pharisees because they knew all the things that they were supposed to do. They sat in Moses' seat but did not follow it. You know, the other day, I was talking to uh, one of our young, sweet girls. And I told her, I was like, well, I didn't see you last week in the church. She goes, Achen, I was at school. I said, no, no, I, I know you, you were at school during the week. I'm talking about last Sunday. I didn't see you last Sunday. She goes, yeah, I went to mommy and I asked her, can we go to church? And she said, oh, we're taking a day off. We're taking a day off. And what, I mean, I know that, you know, we get, it's tiring and it's a struggle, but everything matters in the church, in our life now, because our salvation, every moment matters. Every time I decide to skip prayer, it matters. Every time I decide to skip church, it matters. Every time I decide to hold the grudge, it matters. And what I, what really gets me is when people say, oh, God doesn't care how much you pray. God doesn't care whether you go to church. God doesn't care if you fast. God doesn't care how much you give. God doesn't care. This is our justifications now that we say. Why do we say this? I don't know why we say this. Wouldn't it have been better? And I think it would have been nicer even with our kids if we say, I'm struggling. This is what I'm, we're supposed to go to church. But I'm feeling lazy. And I'm struggling. Isn't that more authentic? Isn't that more truthful to them? Rather than teaching them days off are okay? And we joke about it. And I tell you, we laugh now and we will cry later about this. We laugh now. It's a joke. It's, it's silly. But the more we do this, as generation, the next generation comes, we will cry. But we should take these things very seriously. I mean, listen, even with our kids, it's a struggle. It's hard. Today, my son, I woke him up and he said, why again? 
Why again? Because yesterday we had a Qurbana in the morning for Abraham, Thomas, and Uncle. So he said, why again? Because I'm supposed to get another six days. Why again? I told him, yesterday was for Abraham, Thomas, and Uncle. Today is for the resurrection. It's Sunday. You know, but my whole thing is, they, let the kids be, right? They may do whatever they do. But the question for me is, am I praying? Am I coming? Am I fasting? Am I giving? That's it. They'll absorb it. They'll figure it out over time, what's real, what's not. But let's not justify these things. The Pharisees were justifying. They were making excuses. Listen, the Pharisees sit at the seat of Moses. We as Orthodox Christians, we sit at the seat of the apostles, the saints, the believers over thousands of years. And remember that our Lord is compassionate. He was critical of the Pharisees because they were justifying their way of life, even though they knew the truth. But he was compassionate to the harlots, to the tax collectors. He cared about them because they were trying. They were, they were, they were in a bad path, but they were willing to turn and struggle. That's all he's asking of us. We're not going to make it perfectly all the time. We're weak. But at least let us try and aspire to live the true faith so that we can be worthy of standing with the martyrs, the confessors, the saints, the apostles, when our Lord comes again. May our glory be to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always, forever and ever.